This is charcoal. And this is biochar. What's the difference? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made my biochar. And I'll also show you the crucial step you must never miss before you ever put biochar in your garden. Okay, hey, before we get started, why don't we take a look at what biochar is. So according to the International Biochar Initiative definition, biochar is a solid material obtained from the thermal chemical conversion of biomass in an oxygen limited environment. Biochar is a stable solid that is rich in pyrogenic carbon and can endure in soil for thousands of years. The drum that I'm building this fire in has no holes in the bottom, which limits the amount of oxygen that enters the fire. And that in turn prevents all the wood from just burning down strictly to ash and leaving us with the carbon that we want or the charcoal. The use of biochar in agriculture is experiencing a resurgence these days. It was originally used in the Amazon basin by the First Nations people in South America as a way to enrich their soils, commonly known as terra preta. Now that we've got this fire going, let's uh, bring in the parent material here. We have uh, some old dried cane from the ravine and prunings from our avocado and mango trees. I'm just going to lay these on top slowly bit by bit and as they burn down I'll add more. So you'll hear that the making of biochar sequesters carbon for thousands of years and you put it in the soil but you might ask yourself well how does that happen making a fire? Well because if you let the waste material just decompose, almost all the carbon dioxide is released into the air, whereas making biochar, it's locked in. The first part of your burn, you're gonna have a lot of smoke as the fire burns off the gases and the water vapor. But then comes the sweet spot. Okay, you can see now we're starting to get a little more flame on the top and less smoke, which is what we want, according to the intraweb. So what's happening here, as you build your fire, or add wood onto the top of your fire in your, in your barrel, in your closed barrel, with no oxygen coming in the bottom, the fire follows the wood up the barrel. And there's no oxygen in the bottom, and so there's no fire, and that kind of stays as coals. Here I am, I'm going to fill up my bucket and getting ready for the quenching phase. The idea behind biochar is to sequester carbon from waste material. So that's the key right there, waste material. What we don't want is deforestation to create material to burn, biomass. So it's just leftover things. So there are large areas of the world where farmers, after they've harvested their leftovers from their harvest, they just burn, burn to ash and release all kinds of different uh, gases into the atmosphere, which create uh, global warming. If we can get farmers to stop the practice of slash and burn and turn it into slash and biochar, it would be a great step in the right direction for the health of the planet. There's a ton of information on the internet about the possible benefits of biochar, including possibly replacing plastic. Check it out. So if you've got this far, you're probably thinking, well, that's all fine and dandy, but what about the benefits for my garden? Okay, I'll tell you in a moment, but first I'm going to quench this fire. I'm going to pour water into the fire to stop the burning and keep the charcoal. Now the water is going to be absorbed by the biochar and also 
the kind of the, the quick cooling is going to crack it open a little bit more and make even more living spaces for those microbes that we're looking to house. Benefits of biochar. Well, improves soil aeration, improves water holding capacity, nutrient retention, prevents compaction, and houses microbes and defends roots and fights pests. They say uh, biochar can hold up to five times its own weight in water. Now there are fears of biochar increasing pH. The more I dug around on the internet, it seemed like the more it said it didn't really increase it all that much. And actually it didn't at all. It went pH neutral when you charged it or inoculated it, which we're going to do here in a minute. What really increases soil pH is wood ash. So by quenching it here and rinsing it, we got rid of all the ash. And all we have left is beautiful charcoal, which is not biochar yet. We have to inoculate it. And that's what we're going to do next. If you were to just chuck this into your garden, imagine what would happen. So this is just basically empty. It's carbon and it would suck out all the nutrients and microbes out of your garden soil and the moisture and then you'd have a problem there so off into the worm bin so they say a good test if uh, all the oils and stuff come off the biochar if it's clean is that you rub it in your hands get them stained they wash off in water you don't need soap it's clean and ready to go all the oils have been burnt off so that looks pretty good let's put this away for a couple of weeks and soak up all this goodness in here so i've had the biochar in with my worms and the worm castings for the last week or so so i'm just going to uh collect the biochar out crush it up a little bit and add it to the compost So if you're interested in what the uh, inoculated worm casted biochar, what kind of effect it had on my hot compost, check out my hot compost video and see what happened after I did this. I think you'll like it. So here's my pile of compost with the biochar. So I'm going to do a special little blend here of my biochar compost and worm castings together at last. The best place for any soil amendment that you make is in or on the garden. So that's what I'm going to do here. Thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any constructive suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Garden on.